Good morning. China's structural advantages across their industrial and economic sectors, and even in their educational systems, seem to be self-perpetuating now, becoming deeper and more entrenched over time. We're seeing now that China is able to pursue big, capital-intensive projects that other countries, including the United States, cannot afford to do. And it starts at the top with China's giant trade surpluses, billions of dollars a day which are earned through exports. That means that these are giant pools of capital which do not need to be financed by capital markets or by taxpayers. Next, we have China's dominance across supply chains for basically everything, from the mines to the refineries to the factories. Then the Chinese factory sector itself, which is ruthlessly efficient and low cost and massive. Finally, there are domestic and outbound logistics and shipping systems. And when you put it all together, it simply means that China can do things that nobody else can. Let's look at how this is playing out in wind power. Chinese companies are dominant in the production of technologies and services across both solar and wind. All of the top five solar panel companies in the world are from China. And just those top five companies have about 60% of the world's market. In wind power, four of the top five companies in the world are Chinese with a global market share of 44%. Gold Wind Science and Technology last year moved into the number one spot, replacing Vestas Wind, a Danish company. The key to China's growth in wind power is that they're building much bigger wind turbines than anyone else. And these bigger turbines mean more electrical energy and a bigger reduction in construction and maintenance and repair costs. On wind farms, big turbines can replace many small ones. Chinese companies are racing to build turbines bigger and to do so faster. Last year, Goldwind built a massive 16 megawatt wind turbine in just 24 hours. A single Goldwind turbine also broke a record for energy production over a 24 hour period, enough to power 170,000 homes. And Chinese companies are aggressively building new wind power projects abroad. In June, a Chinese power company invested $147 million to develop two wind farms in northeast Brazil with the power generated to be sold on the free energy market. That part's important because SPIC, the Chinese developer, does not have price guarantees on the electricity that comes out of those wind projects. For them, it's on speculation, and they hope that their upfront investment and maintenance costs will be recovered later. So they're doing all this without a net, you might say. There's no local subsidies or long-term contract for the wind power. SPIC is also building two solar farms in Brazil, and those are backstopped by some long-term contracts. But on the big wind farms, clearly they expect that these big turbines will pay for themselves. By contrast, let's consider how things are playing out in the U.S. Northeast, where we are hoping to develop a strong offshore wind industry. We have lots of political will to do so and lots of government money promised to developers who can build it. But these projects are running into some big problems. Last month in New Jersey, a large offshore wind project got postponed because there's nobody who can build the turbine blades. Companies in Chicago and in New York agreed to build a large wind farm 40 miles offshore, 100 turbines that could power a million homes. Remember again that Gold Wind's turbine, just one, produced enough power for 170,000 homes. In New Jersey, they want to build 100 smaller turbines, producing power for 10,000 homes each would be the math on that one. They could, in theory, supply power to 1 million homes with fewer than 10 of those Gold Wind machines instead of needing 100 little ones. Anyway. General Electric's wind division refused to even bid on the project, and turbines made by Vestas, the Danish company, are not suitable. The lone remaining supplier, Siemens, said they can do the job, but that they are substantially raising their prices for the turbines. Let's back up, though, because Siemens is not the lone remaining manufacturer. Siemens isn't even in the top five manufacturers of wind systems globally. Chinese companies weren't considered for the New Jersey projects at all, which there may be valid reasons for, but we shouldn't pretend that there are only 
three wind turbine manufacturers in the world. Other wind projects in the United States are being canceled too. This from AP. Last year, Orsted notified officials, also in New Jersey, that they are canceling two large power projects, which was a blow to both Washington and to the municipal governments of New Jersey. These were for Southern New Jersey, and the company said there were supply chain problems and project financing costs. Rising interest rates means that they're using either borrowed money or if Orsted is deploying equity capital, their hurdle rates have gone way up. Either way, the math for them doesn't work anymore. And Orsted is walking away from $100 million in guarantees and tax breaks. The governor of New Jersey is furious. He set up those tax breaks for the company to come in, suffered a lot of criticism for it, and now the company is pulling out. He says that Orsted was required to post $200 million in bonds, and he's determined that Orsted will pay that money whether they do the projects or not. And the piece concludes by noting other cancellations in Massachusetts and Connecticut. The Northeast United States has the highest electric bills in the country. Only residents of Hawaii and California pay more. We should assume that electricity that is generated and sold on the open market in the Northeast United States will get higher prices than in Northeast Brazil. And remember that these U.S. projects are getting canceled even though there are hundreds of millions of dollars worth of other subsidies and guarantees. But China is building wind farms in Brazil on speculation, while our projects are getting canceled despite guarantees. And our own companies are telling us why. They can't find suppliers for the equipment they need, and the borrowing costs are too high to get the money they need. This is Feng Huang ancient town, Hunan province. Be good. No man comes to the Father but by me. Everyone who hears these words of Jesus and acts